All right, we're on now. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Hi, folks. It's good to be with you, and love to everybody out there. Uh, we're going to just do a video on Did God Become a Man? I'm going to read a few things, and I just want Mike's opinion on some of the things I'm going to read. And um, you can get this booklet off tr by on truthnet.com, I think it is. Or <coughs> And um, it says, imagine for the moment that you have a favourite lamb. You were present at the birth of the lamb, you watched it grow, you cared for it, gave it food when it was hungry, provided warmth when it was all cold, protected it from predators that threatened its life. You came to be very close with the lamb. Even though you know it cannot understand what you say, you share your most personal thoughts with it. This lamb has become your best friend. Now imagine that one day you learn this lamb has become gravely ill. It is close to death. You weep at the thought of losing your best friend. You want to do whatever you can to prevent this lamb from dying. You ask the veterinarian what can you do to help and he tells you your lamb needs a new liver. The one she has is not functioning properly and she is being slowly poisoned by the toxins in her blood. To further complicate things the vet veterinarian tells you that a suitable replacement liver cannot come from just any other lamb. It requires a very special liver, one that has never been polluted with any toxins of any kind. You soon discover the hopelessness of the situation. In desperation, you ask the doctor, where can we find such a liver? The doctor tells you the only solution is for you, yourself, to become a lamb, to be born into this world perfectly pure, and then to sacrifice your liver for the lamb in order to save its life. This is the choice God faced. Man has become wicked and polluted, unholy in the sight of God. Mankind is slowly dying of this pollution, and with no solution we would die apart from God, eventually separated from Him. Yet because He loves us too much, and because He desires an eternal relationship with us, He Himself became a man, a pure man, Jesus Christ, to free us from the pollution of sin. The Bible says that God made him who knew no sin, Jesus, to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. 2 Corinthians 5.21 Do you want to just say a few thoughts, Mike, on, on that? Yeah, um, it's very profound, and it's, it's also true that God did become a man, and basically he took our place, um, the Bible's clear about this. It says, Great is the mystery of godliness, that God was manifested in the flesh. Mm. Um, I would say it's, a, it's an amazing miracle that if God didn't love us, then we wouldn't have the Bible and we wouldn't have Jesus Christ as our Saviour. Mm. So I think we need to be really, really humble and really grateful that God would... What's the word? He would... Um, make such a sacrifice for us and to give this to us mm. even though that you know that we can at times we can be really awful and we've seen some really really bad things in the world and that God still wants to connect with us and have that relationship with us that mm. just mm. it just shows the how much he's willing to give and sacrifice for us. Wow. Would you humbling, yeah. Would you like to read that passage there? Philippians 2 verses 5 to 11. Yeah, we're, we're just going to look now, you know, that was a, a, an excellent reading there about why God, Christ became, God became a man. My brothers gave some good thoughts and now we're just going to look at what the Bible teaches about God becoming a man. And uh, if you could read Philippians 2. Yeah. Let this same attitude and purpose and humble mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. Let him be your example in humility who, although being essentially one with God and in the <coughs> form of God, possessing the fullness of the attributes which make God God, did not think this equality with God was a thing to be eagerly grasped or retained, but stripped himself of all privileges and rightful dignity, so as to assume the guise of a servant, in that he, may, he became like men and was born a human being. And after he had appeared in human form, he abased and humbled himself, still further and carried his obedience to the extreme of death, even the death of the cross. 
Therefore, because he stooped so low, God has highly exalted him and has freely bestowed on him the name that is above every other name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue frankly and openly confess and acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. So, I, I just uh, some scriptures on the other side. Can God become a man? Um, it says in Mark 10, 27, with God all things are possible. Mark 14, 36, Father, all things are possible for you. And Romans 11, 36, for of him and through him and to him are all things. Jesus was prophesied in the Old Testament. Isaiah 9, 6, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor and Mighty God. Isaiah 7, 14, Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel, God with us. Matthew 1, 23. Even in the fall of the garden, Jesus prophesied, Jesus is prophesied as the seed of the woman who will be bruised at the head of the serpent. Genesis 3, 15. I will put enmity between you, the woman, and between your seed and her seed, and he shall bruise you on the head, and you shall bruise him on the heel. King Solomon prophesied about son Jesus. Proverbs 30 verse 4. Who has ascended unto heaven <coughs> or descended. Who has gathered the wind in his fist. Who has bound the waters in a garment. Who has established all the ends of the earth. What is his name? What is his son's name? If you know. Prophet Isaiah spoke of one who would announce Jesus as God. Fulfilled by John the Baptist. Isaiah 40 verse 3. The voice of the one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight a desert way for our God. Jesus, Son of God, in Luke 10, 22, all things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and who the Father except the Son. John 10, 30, I and the Father are one. John 14, 9, 10, he who has seen me has seen the Father. Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? Being of the same nature as God means that Jesus has the demonstration, demonstrate the power and authority to be eternally pre-existent. John chapter 1 verse 1 to 2. Reign supreme over everything including creation. Colossians chapter 1 verse 15 and 50. To be worshipped. Matthew chapter 2 verse 11. To forgive sins. Mark chapter 2 verse 5 to 12. Was Jesus God? He claimed for himself to be God. In John 5, 58, before Abraham was, I am, the same name used by God to refer to himself in Exodus 34, verse 3. John 14, 9, he who has seen me has seen the Father. John 10, 13, I am my Father of one. Uh, John 20, 28, Thomas said to him, my God, my Lord and my God. Titus 2, 13, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Saviour Jesus Christ. Luke 7, 16, God has visited his people. God calls him God. Hebrews 1, 8, but to the Son, he says, your throne of God is forever and ever. Jesus demonstrates he was God. Matthew 1, 23 to 27, his power over spiritual forces, power over natural forces, Matthew 8, 23, 27, has power over sickness and disease, Matthew 8, verse 1 to 3, has power over death of others, Matthew 9, 23, 25, Luke 7, 11, 16, and John 11, verse 30 to 45. He has power over death, Matthew 17, verse 9. Other recognized Jesus as God. The disciples said Jesus was God, Luke 9, verse 20. The Pharisees recognized Jesus as God, Luke 5, 21. Common people recognized Jesus as God, Luke 4, 36. Roman authorities recognized Jesus as God. Luke 23, 47, demons recognise Jesus as God. Luke uh, 4, 34. So my question to you, Mike, in looking at these scriptures, the Muslim apologists and Muslims will say that the Bible does not say that Jesus is God. Mm. From what we've looked at here, what are your observations with the Muslim polemic that um, Jesus is not God? What are your thoughts? There's no basis for him to come to that conclusion. Except the fact that the the quote in the Quran. So, 
other than that, they don't have anything else to back it up. But mm. we have the Bible, which is based on thousands upon thousands of manuscripts, which we have in our possession. I think Muslim manuscripts don't even come to a thousand, do they? Don't even touch that, do they? I don't know, I don't, to be honest. I don't think it does, but... So, um, Peter the Apostle recognised Jesus, who he truly was. He says, you are the Son of the Blessed, the One of the Most High. Um, to, see, to, be, to say that you are the Son of God, he's, he's making himself equal with God. Peter recognised who Jesus was. Mm. So did John the Baptist. Peter never saw Jesus as a carpenter or just a, just a prophet or just some simple slave, as Muslims say. But he saw him who he truly was. Mm. And the Bible says, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, mm. but by my Father in heaven. And that's what we have, that's how we know, because it's revealed to us by the Father, the one true God, the one who reigns in heaven with Jesus Christ as Lord. And this is the God that you're missing out on. This is the God that you don't have. Mm. This is the God that you should be submitting your will to, not, not somewhere else. So yeah, the Bible's very clear. It says it in John eight fifty eight. Mm. Thomas, even Thomas said it, my Lord and my God. It uses a capital L for Lord, big L. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. I, I just want to talk about context. Uh, St. Saint Augustine said there are three ways to understand the Bible uh, to students. He said you need to know three things. One, context. Two, context. Three, context. Mm. And Muslim apologies to just wrenching text out of context yeah. you know there are many passages that say jesus is a man no argument the muslims pull them out there are many passages that say jesus is god as well and so we have a mystery that he's the god man yeah. uh, but you know the muslims are pulling text out of context and if we were to do the same if we if we got the quran here and we started pulling out verses the muslims are quick to say uh, have you got it in the context of the sunnah yeah. Have you got it in the context of the hadiths? Yeah. Uh, have you used legitimate hadiths? Do you know Arabic? Do you know Arabic? Uh, they start getting on that case about mm. are you getting it in context? And yet, Muslims blatantly quote scripture after scripture at Hyde Park, and they don't know Ar uh, they don't know Greek, they don't know Hebrew, they don't really know our Christian scholars, mm. they don't really know what they're talking about, and yet they're allowed to do it. And they don't get things in context. Yeah, it's easy to misunderstand the Bible and isolate a passage and put your own opinion on it. But unless you've studied it, unless you know what it's talking about, then I wouldn't even go there. Mm. I just wouldn't go there. I, you just embarrass yourself and you look silly when people when people are arguing against you. There are so many arguments. Um, to me, Jesus is not an argument. To you guys, he is an argument for some reason. It's someone to argue over. You even make the claim that you love him more than us. I can't see how. I don't see how because Jesus says you must be born again. Are you born again, Muslims? Mm, mm. Jesus says you must worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Who he, you're not even you don't believe in the Father. You believe in Allah, because mm. the Quran says Allah has no son and is a father to nobody. So I don't see how you, you worshiping Jesus more than us. You claim that you don't eat pork and yet let somehow some Christians eat pork. Well, the Bible says it's not what goes into our mouth that defiles, it's what's in our heart. And if, you, mm. if your heart is not being cleansed by Jesus Christ, mm. and mm. you don't have the Holy Spirit in your heart, then you're going to have a, a... You need a certain... Paul says, the Bible says there has to be a circumcision of the heart, and that's cutting off your old sinful nature, which is in the heart. And that's what you need. You need regeneration. Mm. Mm. And you talk about circumcision at Hyde Park. Muslims have said to me, well, I'm circumcised, I'm following God. You're only circumcised in mm. your flesh, but the, the true circumcision is at the heart, and that's what you need to address, and mm. that's what's missing. That's brilliant, that man. Bro. We're going to uh, we're going to go on to the next two topics in the next video. So thank you for listening, and God bless you. Is that all right? Uh,